Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of Let's Translate Light Novels. Now, you may be wondering why my face is not on the screen and there's an avatar instead. Uh, we've been having some hot weather, and I don't want to sit in front of hot studio lights with makeup and clothes on uh, to record these videos. So August's videos are just going to be my voice and my avatar, I guess. Anyway, this is a series. If you haven't already seen any of the videos in this series yes, yet, you might want to start with uh, part one in the playlist. Uh, the rest of you know the drill. You know what this is about. Uh, check the video description for any other important information. If you want to be one of the patrons whose uh, translations are featured in these videos, just remember reminder, you can join the Patreon at the $12 level. You will have access to the text for these videos a month in advance, and you'll have time to translate it, and you can submit your translations to me if you want for these videos. All right, and now let's go on with the episode. So we got a line of dialogue. Gomen, shinju no hanashi daro, demo sonna hanashi boku ni shite ii no? So this is Ayuru speaking. Um, this is pretty basic uh, grammar and vocabulary. Uh, I have it on the screen there, but I'm not going to go over each word one at a time because it's pretty basic. So patron A's translation. Sorry, you're talking about the pearls, right? But are you sure you should be talking to me about that? Patron B. Sorry, you were talking about a pearl, right? But is it all right to tell me about it? Ayur asked. Patron C. Sorry, but you're talking about the pearls, right? Should you be telling me this? Ayur asked. And small Sarah, sorry, that was a story about a pearl, right? But are you sure it's okay for me to hear it? So all four of these translations, like, they're very, very, very similar. And again, because the grammar and the words are pretty straightforward, it's, you're not going to get that much of a variety here from these translations. Uh, the sorry you're talking about pearls or a pearl or a story about a pearl. Uh, that was a story about a pearl, right? Um, I, I mean, I guess because um, Talia was um, yelling at him earlier for not paying attention. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you were telling a story about a pearl, right? That that would have been a better wording of that from small Sarah. Um, you were talking about pearls, right? You were talking about a pearl, right? You were talking about the pearls, right? So slight variations, but otherwise the same thing. Are you sure you should be talking to me about that? Is it all right to tell me about that? Should you be telling me this, but are you sure it's okay for me to hear it? That's an interesting rephrasing by small Sarah. And actually, I kind of like that because the emphasis is, is it okay for me, a boy, to hear this? I am so sorry if you can hear the kids screaming outside my window, by the way. Uh, I'm happy that they play outside because that's cool, but I don't like that it's noisy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I liked the rewording that small Sarah did there. Um, is it okay if I, a boy, hear the story that you said only girls are allowed to hear? Uh, the next line of dialogue. Ino, small tsu. Kedo, zettai himitsu yo. And then Ayuru says, after a lot of ellipses, um. All right, this is pretty straightforward as well. Zettai himitsu, uh, absolutely a secret. Uh, Tenko-sama, just reminder, that's the name of their god, who's actually evil. <laughs> so this no koto, uh, Tenko-sama no koto, Shinju no koto. I do have a video on koto. Uh, what that actually means. It's sort of like about Tenko, about the pearl. Futari dake no himitsu, like it's just the secret, just between the two of us. So patron A translated that as, it's okay, but keep it a secret, all right? The stuff about Lord Tenko and the pearls, let's keep it a big secret between the two of us. And then Ayudu responds, sure. Patron B, it's fine, but you have to keep it a secret about Lord Tenko and the pearls. It's just between the two of us. So about Lord Tenko and the pearls, when I said that out loud just now, like, it definitely sounded a little unnatural to me. Um, the stuff about Lord Tenko and the Pearls, what Patroné did, it sounds a little more natural, like the way someone would actually speak. About Lord Tenko and the Pearl, and about the Pearls, it's just between the two of us, is a little stilted. Uh, Patron C, it's fine, Talia assured. Um, I'm just gonna make a little note here, too. Um, Patron A, it's okay, period. Patron B, it's fine, dot, dot, dot. Patron C, it's fine, exclamation point. Um, this ino, that small tsu, what it's doing is it's, she's kind of saying this in a huff. Like, you're just like, are you sure it's okay that, that I'm hearing this story? And she's like, yes, it is. You know, she's like, just like, 
ah, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> you weren't listening to me, and then you are listening to me, and and now you're asking me if what I'm doing is taboo. It's like, yeah, goddammit, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what that small tzu is doing. It's showing frustration. It's not showing an exclamation point, at least to me. It looks more like a cheerful, it's fine, you know? It kind of has that reading to it. It's fine, dot, 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 has the sort of like tentativeness to it. It's fine, dot, dot, dot. It's okay. Um, and, and all caps, I think, is doing a bit of the work of that small tzu. But just note that. That adds a lot of emotionality and tone to Talia's voice that didn't really come out in these translations. It also did not come out in small Sarah's translation. Spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway, the rest of the patron C's translation. It's fine, Talia assured. Again, she's not really assuring him. She's kind of frustrated. She's like, yes, it's fine. Um, but it's a secret. What I told you about Lord Tenko and the Pearl stays between us, okay? Okay, Arya replied. And then patron, well, small Sarah, not patron D. Yeah, but we've got to keep it a secret. Mm, that sounds a little too, like, casual. <laughs> There's more emotionality in, in the Japanese. Stuff about Tenko-sama and about the Pearls is our little secret, okay? See, that's so unnatural and weird. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't word it unnaturally and weirdly like small Sarah did just there. Uh, but yeah, just that note about uh, really making Talia's emotionality and voice come through. None of us really did it correctly uh, in this passage. And it's small, small little details, but it really adds a lot. Uh, next section. This is narration. Talia wa mata uttori shita hyojo ni modotta. Let's go on with her line of dialogue. Atashi no kaa-san, shinju wo kami kazari ni shite ta no. <laughs> I hate how motteru and matteru are both very common words and they look almost exactly the same, especially if your glasses are smudged. I'm going to clean them. So anyway, uttori shita hyojo, like a dreamy expression. Uh, so she returned to her former dreamy expression. Um, kamikazari ni shiteta. So kamikazari is like a hair decoration. And then uh, something ni suru is to uh, make something be like X wo Y ni suru is to make X be Y, <laughs> basically. I do have a video on that, um, X ni suru grammar rule. So my mom um, used to use her or has been using her pearl uh, as a hair decoration. Um, but my dad uh, was embarrassed. So in Japanese, you, you never like definitively say what somebody else is feeling because you don't know that. Uh, so you always say like, it seemed like he's embarrassed. But in English, you'd be you can sometimes be more confident and say, oh, my dad was too embarrassed uh, about it. Um, that's that's kind of a personal call, though. You can say, like, I think my dad was embarrassed about it. Uh, no naka ni irete datte. Uh, so datte uh, implies that she she heard that uh, her dad keeps his in his wallet. Um, she doesn't necessarily, you know, she hasn't seen it, but she heard. Um, and matuta oba-san datte. Oba-san, not oba-san, oba-san. <laughs> if she was matuta oba-san, she would be old, <laughs> like an old lady. She was matuta oba-san datte. So even, even matuta, even your mom, uh, surely has one. Uh, and again, this tomo in Japanese, you would often finish a statement with tomo, like I think. But in English, uh, it's not as natural to say I think. Uh, especially when you're saying kitto, it's like, I'm sure I think <laughs> that she that she has one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure she has one too. Uh, patron A. Talia returned to her cheerful self. Uh, uttori? Yeah, uttori shita. I think that's a little more dreamy. I'm going to look it up because I have Japanese Google right here. Uttori. Let's just see. Yeah, like enchanted, swooning dreamily fa yeah it, it, it's more like dreamy rather than um cheerful uh, i mean cheerful is not wrong it's just not as uh, close to what it actually is uh, my mother used to wear her pearl as a hair decoration father was embarrassed so he keeps his pearl in our box of valuables uh? <laughs> oh saifu that is oh saifu right i'm gonna do a little sanity check and look this up to make sure it is yes it is oh saifu wallet Okay, 
I don't know where Box of Valuables came from, unless Patron A just like assumed that the Heen tribe like does not use wallets because wallet is more like a modern invention. It uh, it really doesn't matter, you know. This is kind of just an aside. It's not an important plot point. The most important part is that he's embarrassed and keeps it hidden. It's not super super important that he keeps it hidden in his wallet. Uh, but yeah, it's technically wrong. I'm sure Miss Matuta has one too. So Obasan, um, yeah, you can translate that as Miss or Ms or Mrs or whatever or your mom. Uh, yeah. Patron B. My mother used to wear her pearl in her hair, Talia said as her face lit up again. Ah, so the uh, utorishita hyojo ni mudotta part was added as a tag here. I like that. Uh, well, my father was so embarrassed that he would keep his in his wallet, and I'm sure Aunt Matuta has one too. So the wording here, like after the ellipses, and I'm sure Aunt Matuta has one too, I don't know, it almost sounds like offhand, and I'm sure Aunt Matuta has one too. She's trying to cheer Ayuru up a little bit here, I think. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm sure even your mom has one too. Um, patron C. The blank look on Talia's face had reappeared. Blank look? Um, yeah, like if you're dreamy, I guess you do have a blank look, but like blank look or blank stare more implies like that you're traumatized or that, yeah, or, or that you're kind of in a, in a stupor or something. So I don't think blank look was the best choice here. Uh, I heard my mother used to wear these pearls as hair ornaments and father would hide them in his pouch out of embarrassment, she said solemnly. So pouch works for like, if you didn't want to be all modern and call it a wallet, if you thought that wallet was too modern a term, which yeah, like you could maybe make a case for that. Like purse or pouch, I think is a good, um, like more old timey version of the word wallet. Uh, she said solemnly. So there, there was no, she said solemnly, uh, but I assume patron C is adding this tag just to show a little more tone to her voice that uh, was expressed in the Japanese supposedly. I don't think she, I don't think it really sounds solemn in, in the Japanese, the way she's talking. I think she's a little more like matter of fact when she's telling Ayuru about like what her parents do with their pearls. But I think she's a little more maybe solemn or, or like, hey, I'm sure Auntie Matuta has one too. You know, when she's talking about Matuta's pearl. Oh, and another little nitpicky thing. I, my, I heard my mother used to wear these pearls. Um, we already established in her story earlier that um, the woman, very heteronormative legend, by the way, the woman gets one pearl and the man gets one pearl. Each person only has one pearl. So her mother would not use the pearls as hair ornaments. It would be pearl as hair ornament. And then hair ornament, like that's literally what um, kamikazari is. Like if you look at the kanji and stuff, it's like hair decoration. But like we would say something like a barrette or a hairpin or something like that. That's a little more, I think hairpin would have been good um, just for the time period. That's a little nitpicky, <laughs> but you know, let's see what small Sarah did to butcher this. Taria returned to her formal cheerfulness. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Small Sarah and Patron A, it's not exactly cheerful. It, 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 it's kind of cheerful, but it's more like dreamy. Um, my mom made a hairpiece out of her pearl, but dad seemed to be embarrassed and hid his in his wallet. I'm sure Auntie Matuta has hers with her. So has hers with her? No. Mm, yeah. I, uh, kito moteru doesn't literally mean she's like currently carrying it with her. It just means like she has it. She She kept it. And now the kid is banging on the balcony. This is great. I hope none of this is being picked up on the microphone. All right, next bit of dialogue. Well, it's exciting dialogue. It's just a bunch of ellipses. I think it's like 18 dots. Gotta love it. Uh, the next line of narration. Shoujo wa Ayuru no ho muita. Gomen, okotta no. Ayuru wa chisaku kubi o futta. So this is a little confusing because um, there's no punctuation. But and I read it just now a little bit incorrectly. It should be, gomen, okotta no? It, I think it's a question, especially since you see after it that Ayuru shakes his head no. So um, there's silence, that's Ayuru's dot dot dots. Uh, the girl, or Talia, or she, uh, turned towards Ayuru, or she, she looked at Ayuru. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I made you mad, or did I make you mad? And then um, Ayuru shakes his head, uh, chisaku, so smallly, <laughs> uh, littlely, um, lightly or, uh, softly, uh, you know, he's not like shaking his head, no, vigorously, like, no, but just like very gently, no. 
Um, so patron A, she turned to Ayuru. I'm sorry, are you angry? He lightly shook his head. Uh, so yeah, lightly works. Ayuru didn't say anything as a translation for the dot, 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 dot. Talia turned to look at him. I'm sorry, forgetting angry. So again, yeah, it's, it's, can be a little unclear if you just look at the line of dialogue in isolation. Gomen, okotta no. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I got angry <laughs> versus I'm sorry, did you get angry? Um, if it were okorasetta no, then that would be very clear. It would be, I'm sorry, did I make you angry? Uh, but it is a little unclear just from that line of dialogue. Um, then Ayudu gave a small shake of his head. And now there's an ice cream truck. You know what? I don't know if that's copyrighted, so I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> uh, Ayudu gave a small shake of his head. I like that. Um, changing the adverb chisaku into just an adjective small. Um, patron C. Ayudu didn't have a response as a translation for dot 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 dot. I'm sorry, are you mad at me? She asked, now facing Ayuru. So I like that Patron C moved that dialogue tag uh, after what she said. Like, it didn't have to be done that way, but it works. It flows nicely. Um, Ayuru slightly shook his head. I don't know how you can slightly shake your head, but I think that still works. Uh, small Sarah, the girl faced Ayuru. <laughs> the girl. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone over in past videos why, like, translating shoujo -wa as the girl just sounds kind of weird. Um, it's just Talia, or she, faced Ayuru. I'm sorry, did I make you mad? Um, Ayuru shook his head meekly. Ooh, I like meekly. <laughs> it's it's maybe reading a little too much into Chisaku, but I like it. It really paints, paints a picture. All right, let's move on to the next line of dialogue. So she says it, she's saying it again here. Uh, so now we have a little description. She's saying kippari. She's saying this like, you know, confidently, like I'm making a declaration <laughs> kind of thing. So she's just repeating what she said before. But I, I really do think your mom has a seiran pearl. I like, like I swear, I promise you. Um, she said kippari. Uh, patron A, but I'm sure your mother has one of them, Talia said, again with confidence. A beautiful Seiran pearl. I like that Patron A put that dialogue tag into the center of what uh, Talia's line was to break up these ellipses. By putting that dialogue tag in between those things, it serves as the dot 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 and it makes it a little, it flows better. I like that. Patron B. But I really believe that your mother has one, dot dot dot, a Seiran pearl, dot dot dot, she said confidently. So see what that does? If you have all these ellipses in there, it doesn't look like she's saying it confidently <laughs> in English. Like it looks, ellipses kind of look tentative. It's, it's like you're trailing off or you're unsure of what you're saying. So it doesn't exactly work as well uh, in English, even though it works in Japanese to have those ellipses. It doesn't work as well in English. Uh, patron C. Well, I'm pretty sure your mother has the Azure Pearl. So remember, Patron C translated it as Azure Pearl. Uh, and again, there's only one pearl per per person. So she doesn't have Azure Pearl. I mean, unless she took the pearl that um, her beloved had, <laughs> and now she has two of them. Uh, she said firmly. I like firmly for keep putty. Um, and then Patron, not Patron D, small Sarah. But I'm sure your mom has one Seiran Pearl, Tardia said confidently. So has one Seiran pearl that that's like it's it's calling unnecessary attention to the number of Seiran pearl like a Seiran pearl like one Seiran pearl like of course it would be one everybody only has one if they have any Seiran pearls a Seiran pearl would be better uh, the next line of narration Ayuru wa ima made ichido ah uh, ichido tari tomo haha ni chichi no koto wo tazneta koto ga nakatta so Wow, a lot of the vocabulary and grammar in this episode is pretty easy so far. I think at the very end, the final paragraph has like a lot of more difficult vocabulary. So uh, look forward to that. But yeah, um, up until now, or all this time, uh, or as long as he's been alive, um, Ayuru had never asked his mother about his father. Basically what that means. Um, so patron A, he had never once asked his mother about his father. I think putting Ayuru in place of he would, would serve a little better here because we're kind of starting a new, we're adding a, a new rather significant piece of information to the story. 
we're kind of switching gears here, the narrator's having a little aside and telling you some backstory and exposition. So I think actually saying Ayuru here would be better than he. Little nitpicky. Patron B. Ayuru had never once inquired about his father. Um, mm, it, it is specifically saying, like, he never asked his mother about his father. Never once inquired about his father. Sounds a little overly formal. Um, patron C. Ayuru realized that he has never asked his mother about his father. It's not that he realized it exactly. This is just the narrator giving us some backstory. Ayuru never asked his mother about his father. And then small Sarah, Ayudu had not once inquired <laughs> about his father. So yeah, inquired is not the best verb uh, to use. Maybe it's like what dictionaries say tazuneta means, but yeah, it's asked. Um, so next line of narration, this is more exposition about Ayudu's backstory. Haha ga ichizoku no osa no ie no musume ni umareta koto wa hito no hanashi de shiteiru. Shikashi, Ayudu ga monokokoro tsuita koro kara haha wa Kando no mi no ue datta. All right, so now we have some vocabulary that's that's pretty atypical that even I have to look up. <laughs> okay, so ichizoku, that's their clan. Uh, osa, if you look at the kanji, it's a very beginning level kanji. It, it's the kanji for like long, right? Um, it's the chief, basically, the chief of their tribe. Um, so his mother was born the daughter of their village chief. Um, hito no hanashi de shiteiru. So, based off of what people say, or have said, uh, Ayuru knew that his mother was born um, as the daughter of the chief of their clan. Like, as a reader, you should be like, whoa, <laughs> that, that doesn't add up. Because <laughs> obviously they're poor, and she's a single mother, and they're kind of outcasts. Interesting. Um, shikashi, Ayuru ga, okay, so, mono kokoro tsuita koro kara. This is a very, very, very common phrase in Japanese. It means, like, for as long as Ayuru could remember, basically. It's like, um, ever since the day that he became sentient, <laughs> more or less. It's like, ever since the day that he, uh, was able to, like, remember things and process information. It's kind of literally what that means, but it's basically, like, for as long as Ayuru could remember. Um, and then, kando no mi. So, kando is, uh, basically just disowned. Um, something or another no mi, that mi there, that kanji, it just, it means body. So basically, she has been a, a disowned person, <laughs> basically. Uh, mi no ue, deatta. So yeah, she has been uh, disowned uh, as long as Ayuru could remember. His mother was disowned. Like, even though he knew from, like, what the people in the tribe said, that she was born uh, the daughter of the chief of their village, of uh, not their village, their tribe. Uh, you know, she's been disowned as long as he can remember. So patron A, he knew from those around him, that's kind of a good way of working on the hito no hanashi de, uh, that his mother was born daughter, you'd need like the daughter, born daughter, <laughs> um, was born the daughter of the chief, or was the daughter. You don't need that umareta, like was the daughter or is the daughter of the chief of the clan. But as far as back as he can remember, yep, uh, his mother had been disowned by the clan. Um, patron B. He knew from stories he'd heard, so that's another way of working the hito no hanashi de. That's a little more literal. Well, from stories he'd heard from people would have been, like, much more literal. Uh, stories he'd heard works better. It's less wordy. That his mother was born to the daughter? Nope. <laughs> of uh, the clan head. Yeah, musume ni umareta, like, was born as uh, the daughter of the clan head. However, as far as he could remember, uh, like, was the daughter. Uh, uh, yeah, born the daughter or born as the daughter is kind of weird. Uh, just is the daughter. <laughs> or was the daughter. However, as far as he could remember, his mother had never been a part of that family. So that's another way of reworking the, like, was disowned. Um, and actually, from Ayuru's POV, his mother had never been part of that family would make a little more sense. That would be a little more how maybe he would have processed that as a child. He wouldn't have necessarily known the concept of disownment. <laughs> uh, so I kind of like that reworking, even though in Japanese it did literally say that she was disowned. Um, yeah, it's like his mother had never been part of that family, or his mother had never had a family or something like uh, that. That makes sense from Ayuru's POV. Patron C. He knew from what other people had told him, so that's another way of reworking the hito no hanashi de, uh, that his mother was born the daughter of the clan chieftain. Uh, chieftain works. 
Ayur's mother had been disowned for as long as he can remember. Had been disowned. It, it's kind of weird. Was disowned. <laughs> is a disowned person. It's kind of literally what it is in Japanese. It's hard to work that in there. I really like his mother had never been part of that family, uh, even though it doesn't use the word disowned. Uh, mother had been disowned for as long as he can remember. Uh, small Sarah, he knew from talk from the other villagers. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good way of working that. That his mother was born in the tribe leader's house. That's an interesting way of wording that. It, but it's like, that's a little vague. It's like, she was born, like physically born in the house, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she was the chieftain's daughter. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but again, from Ayuru's POV, like, that's not the worst way of wording it. But I think this is important backstory for the reader. This is important exposition. It's important that the reader know, okay, she was the daughter's, the chieftain's daughter, but she was disowned. Why? Um, this is juicy. Uh, but just after Ayuru was born, his mother was cut off from the family. Ooh, I like cut off from the family. Just after Ayuru was born, that's not technically what Monokokoro Tsuita Korokara, but I guess, like, it would have been just after he was born. Uh, I like this wording, but just after Ayuru was born, his mother was cut off from the family. Uh, it, it works. It's not technically, like, 100% correct, but I think it does the job. Good job, small Sarah. The first part was terrible, but the second part was good. Okay, the next paragraph. Okay, the next two sections are a little harder. And they're both narration and backstory. This one is not as hard. Mura kara potsurito hanareta tokoro, ah, not tokoro, basho ni wazukabakari no tabatake to chisa na ie wo ataerareta, ataerareta sonna mazushi sekatsu no naka de such a long sentence. Haha wa hishi ni jibun wo sodatete kureta. So, uh, potsuri to hanareta. So, like, like, plunk! <laughs> uh, away, uh, from, from the others, from the rest of the village. So, wazuka bakari no, like a, a very small, um, field and a very small house. So, she was, she was given a small field and a small house, like, quite a, away, uh, from the village. You know what? I'm going to look up Potsurito just to make sure because looking up things is good. Potsurito. Yeah. Isolated, standing alone. Yeah. It, it doesn't really like specify how far away from the village she was, but like I kind of imagine that like you have this little house by itself outside the village. Sonna mazushi seikatsu no naka de. So amid such a, you know, impoverished life uh, his mother uh, d desperately, hishini, um, raised him, basically, is literally what that means. Um, so let's see how we all reworked that. Uh, patron A, she lived in poverty with only a small house and a few fields to her name, uh, isolated from the village, but put all her might into giving Ayuru a good life. I like put all her might into from hishini. Hishini is one of those... Um, adverbs that is it's not necessarily hard to translate but it's one of those adverbs that you really cannot translate the same way every single time it's used quite frequently in japanese prose um and like desperately is kind of what you'll what you'll fall it's what i fall back on it's like my default like desperately uh, but rarely will i ever end up translating it as desperately i wonder how small sarah translated it but yeah i really liked the um put all her might i really like that wording of it into giving Ayuru a good life uh, for sodatete kureta. So giving Ayuru a good life, you might wonder where that came from. Jibun wo sodatete kureta. And I say it came from the kureta ending of sodatete kureta. Uh, this kureta ending means like she did him a favor. She did a good thing by putting all of her might into raising him, basically, is what that kureta does. So it actually is not a mistranslation or a stretch to word it that way, put all her might into giving Ayudu a good life. So that, that's a really good wording of that. Uh, patron B, on her own with just a small plot of land and a tiny house in a remote village. The, the in a remote village was not correct. It's, it's just like outside of the village where she's supposed to live as someone of the Heen tribe. His mother did her best to raise him. That works too. His mother did her best to raise him. 
it kind of takes a little bit of the desperation out of it. And also patron B kind of removed that, that they're impoverished, the mazushi part. So it, it, it paints a little less of a poor picture, like, oh, look at them, this little dilapidated house kind of outside the village with hardly any land and she's all by herself and she's like struggling to raise like I think struggling to raise him works too although um it, it shows her resilience more to say put all her might into giving Ayuru a good life uh patron C they stayed far away from the village it's not really that they stayed they lived far away from the village in a small remote house with a few fields I think with only a few fields would paint a better picture here because with a few fields, I don't know, to me as a modern person, that wow, a few fields, that must cost a couple million dollars to live there. <laughs> oh my god, we're so poor. Um, that house was given to his mother and with, with given to his mother. Yeah, that's the Ataerarata part. Um, but again, in modern context, that house was given to his mother makes it sound like like, she's got it made, man. They gave her a house and, like, a bunch of fields. It's like, damn, I, I want to be given a house and a bunch of fields. <laughs> ah, interesting looking at this through a modern lens. But yeah, um, see how, that, how our current modern cultural biases make us read something like that. So careful there. Um, that house was given to his mother, and within that house, she did everything in her power to raise her son in solitude. So this is a little, I, I like I like part of this and I don't like part of this. Did everything in her power. I very much like that for Hishini. But to raise her son in solitude implies that she's doing everything in her power to make sure that he's by himself. <laughs> that, he, that he's not around anyone else. So careful uh, to raise her son by herself uh, would, would be correct. But to raise her son in solitude, I don't know, that paints this very bleak picture of like keeping him in a locked room by himself. Um... Small Sarah, leaving the town she was born in. Nope, she was thrown out, Sarah. She was not, she didn't leave it. And moving to such a little house on a farm, to such a poor lifestyle, she put all her work into raising her son. She put all her work into raising her son is fine, but yeah, this weird, like, leaving the town she was born in and moving to a little house on a farm. <laughs> Again, this sounds more like we're giving her a lot of power here. She decided to, to leave and get herself a little house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't quite the right picture there, small Sarah. All right, and now uh, to the final paragraph of this video, which has a lot of fun words that we are going to look up together. Oh boy, there was so much furigana in this section too, because even Japanese readers had a hard time with some of these words. Okay, kin no kami ni aoi hitomi. That part's easy. Blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, kuto no tami ni kojin to sangesumare. So this final sentence is, is kind of easy, but the, yeah, the second sentence is bleh. So, kuto no tami. So, tami is like the citizens of, of kuto. Uh, kojin. So, kojin means like a foreigner. Let me actually double check that and look it up. It actually comes up in the anime uh, and in the manga of Shigiyugi. There's like a pun that's done about it. Um, I think Chichiri is the one who refers to Nakago as a, um, as a kojin. And then Miyaka mishears it and thinks that he said like, oh, I forgot what she misheard it as. Oh, but another one she misheard it. I was Ojin, which is like a, an old man, an old fart. Yeah, so the Northern Barbarian Tribes is is what Google Translate is calling this. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of like a... It's a special old kind of Japanese word for, like, for foreigner. Uh, but yeah, more specifically, the Northern Barbarian Tribes in ancient China <laughs> or the Northern Barbarian Tribes. And, and that checks out because I think the Heen tribe is sort of supposed to be like the Ainu in a way. Uh, like Shigiyugi's world is sort of parallel to uh, the real world. Um, that's kind of what the Heen are. So yeah, you could translate Kojin as barbarians or foreigner. Foreigner isn't exactly right necessarily because it's, I don't know, again, through our modern lens, that, that would just sound kind of weird. 
Uh, but I, th I think Barbarian is a good one. Uh, outsiders even is, is even fine. But yeah, it's it's a unique word there. Sage sumare. So this is passive voice, and let's look it up. Sage sumare do would be the complete version. So it is uh, to be despised by, basically, since it is passive voice. So what we're saying here is um, they were despised as kojin, kojin to sange sumare. So they were despised as barbarians, as foreigners, outsiders, by the citizens of Kuto. Uh, imi kirawareru. So kirawareru, you probably know. Again, that is passive voice for to hate, so were hated by. Um, but when you add that imi to that, it, it means like even even stronger, uh, like loathed, despised. <laughs> They're just like, just definitely very, very, very hated. So they were hated and despised as barbarians, foreigners, by the citizens of Kuto. Hinzoku wa, so again, all of this like despised and hated by the citizens of Kuto, that is a modifier for Hinzoku wa. So the Hinzoku, the Hin tribe, who were hated and despised as barbarians by the citizens of Kuto. Um, sogai sareru yueni, so yueni is like because or due to. So sogai sareru, again, more passive voice. It would be sogai suru active voice, but sogai sadaru means uh, ostracized or alienated by or cut off. Um, so because they were alienated or cut off or ostracized, uh, basically from the rest of Kuto, that part's implied. Ichizoku no kessoku mo katakatta. So kessoku. The kanji might look familiar to you. The first one is indeed the kanji in kekkon, marriage. So that might give you a bit of a clue on what that means, but I'm going to look it up in dictionary right now. So unity, union, cohesiveness, solidarity, means all those sorts of things. Um, and it was katakatta. Uh, so it was, it was hard, <laughs> as in firm, basically. So their unity, their solidarity, they had a very firm, uh, strong sense of solidarity because they were alienated or uh, by the, the citizens of Kuto who loathed and despised them as barbarians. So that's what that whole thing means. Soして, minzoku no hokori o keshite wasurenakatta. So keshite. Wasure no kata is like, wild horses would not make them forget it kind of thing. It's like, absolutely. It was something that they would absolutely never forget. So, uh, and they they never, ever forgot um, about their pride as a people, basically. So that's what that whole thing means. Uh, let's see how it was translated by everyone. Really hard uh, words here and a lot of passive voice. So let's see. Uh, patron A, with their blonde hair and blue eyes, the Heen clan was scorned, I like scorned, and marginalized, I dig that, by the people of the Kuto kingdom, period. <laughs> As a result, their familiar bonds became tight, and they never forgot their pride. Okay, it's clean, and I think everything is there. Yeah, it's sort of like because they were marginalized, as a result, their familiar bonds became tight. Familiar bonds, I wonder if familial bonds, yeah, became tight. I think they, I think were tight uh, would be better than became tight or had become tight would make a little more sense than became tight. Yeah, I think this works just fine. And they never forgot their pride. Uh, patron B, she had golden hair. Uh, we're talking about the Heen tribe as a whole here. Everybody in the Heen tribe had golden hair and blue eyes. The Heen tribe were a marginalized people, despised and looked down upon as barbarians, I dig that, by the rest of Kuto, period. Because of this, they were all the more united and proud of their clan. I liked this. So you didn't even have to say, like, they never forgot their pride. That sounds a little weird in English, uh, worded literally that way. They were all they were all the more united, kesoku mo katakata, and proud of their clan. I like the way that part was worded, but she had golden hair part is wrong. Like 
with golden hair and blue eyes, the Heen tribe were a marginalized people, despised and looked down upon as barbarians by the rest of Kuto. Uh, other than the she part at the beginning, I like this wording here. Patron C, the Kudo clan. <laughs> Kudos, it's Kuto. Clan absolutely despised the entirety of the Heen clan with their blonde hair and their blue eyes. I kind of like that. It is true that, like, they, part of why the Heen tribe is despised is because they have blonde hair and blue eyes. Everyone else in Kuto, they're basically Japanese. <laughs> Even though they're not technically Japanese, uh, they're, they're Asian, they're Japanese. Um, and the Heen tribe has blonde hair and blue eyes. So they're, they're hated, feared, I think would also be a good word to be used here, and despised. Uh, but despite the alienation and Kuto's unwavering hatred, the Heen people maintained their pride. Unwavering hatred is not exactly there, and th there was some reworking of like the order of the words in these sentences, but the whole sentiment uh, is preserved. So it definitely works. Just change kudo to kuto. <laughs> now, small Sarah, I think I think I did this really badly when I translated this over 20 years ago. Okay, golden hair and blue eyes. The Heen race was despised and alienated by the people of Kuto, but it was because their unity had been weak? Nope, that's not at all true. They were hated and despised because Kuto be racist. Uh, the Heen race, nope, they're not a, well, they're a tribe. Had never forgotten how their pride had been taken away. No, they, they never forgot their pride. They never gave up their pride. Yeah, this is just like kind of the opposite of what it actually is. No, small Sarah, that is wrong. <laughs> All right, so on that note, uh, this is the end of episode 13 of Let's Translate Light Novels. Uh, thank you to all of my patrons for, you know, participating. I had a new patron uh, in, in August videos. I will credit the patrons who wish to be credited at the bottom. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, particularly Greg Lay, Henry Roaming, and Data Fox. Uh, for their extremely wonderful contributions to this series and my other channels. And I hope you all will join me uh, in a couple weeks or next week, whenever I get around to editing it, for episode 14 of Let's Translate Light Novels. Bye!